Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the conference the Lord Provost of Aberdeen, Councillor Barney Crockett. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, there'll be nothing quite as sophisticated, perhaps, from me. Uh, and interestingly, I did know about W.C. Fields. Uh, one of his other, of course, phrases was, uh, I love children, uh, boiled or fried. Uh, but uh, he, his appearance at Tivoli the, the, it was the well described in the Evening Express. And he was the world champion juggler. And it's unbelievable the, the things he was doing. I don't think anybody could do it today. But there we are, uh, that, that, a bit about the Tivoli. But why me? Why talk? Well, I'm the sort of surprise edition of, of the sort of amateur. I think uh, the, the uh, show and reel may have made that clear. But two reasons why uh, I can uh, say a few words to you. One is that um, I grew up in the midst of Aberdeen cinemas and the, the tail end of the golden era. And so I probably have one of the youngest people who have quite a lot of memories of that because I started going to the cinema with my mother at age three. And my father worked in shifts in a chemical works. And so to keep her company, she would uh, drag me along to the, to the cinema. But also partly because of that, I've uh, you know developed an interest in the cinemas and I've given talks. So I've given more than 150 talks on the history of Aberdeen cinemas to different community groups. And every time I give one, somebody tells me some more. So I am a repository of uh, all sorts of gossip and uh, street level knowledge uh, of Aberdeen cinemas. But so I'll be trying hard not to overlap with the other speakers and I'm you know, so looking forward to hearing them. So I will try to keep it very light, uh, very much on the human side and, uh, uh, you know, and I avoid coming into conflict with the other speakers. So as I said, I grew up in Aberdeen. I grew up in the biggest tenement in Aberdeen and this uh, uh, roughest part of Aberdeen. And uh, one of the, the interesting features about Aberdeen and cinemas is that Aberdeen was the most crowded major city in, in Britain and had the poorest housing conditions. So people had a big inducement to go to the cinemas, which is one reason why there were quite so many, uh, uh, maximizing at 20. In 1939. Interestingly, 1939 was the key, the, the biggest attendance at films in the world, in Britain, uh, and in Aberdeen. All three peaked at the, in, at the same time. And the cinema that I started going to, you're going to hear a wee bit more about it uh, later, I think, but I went to uh, the most uh, rundown of Aberdeen cinemas. Uh, one, if anybody's ever seen that, the smallest show enough, the film with Peter Sellers about a 1950s uh, cinema, that was very much the era and the, the timing of what the casino was like. It was much the, the le le less respectable end uh, of cinema going. And I first went when I was, as I said, when I was three, and uh, I, I th therefore maybe one of the youngest people with any memories at all about uh, the casino. And what happened to the casino was that uh, when I was about seven, it was converted to bingo. And uh, all over the Britain, people were making a fortune from bingo. Aberdeen was the exception and north of Aberdeen because nobody was willing to have the shame of applying for a gambling license. But the illegal bookmakers in Aberdeen uh, took over the casino and uh, they made a, a, a large sum of money in a short time there. And uh, one of the people who came, Ken Watmore, who's well known to many Aberdonians, he came to one of my talks. He, he used to sort the organs when he was a 15-year-old, 16-year-old, sort organs uh, for the, the main company in Aberdeen. And he was sent along to the casino to sort the organ. And he said, Barney, he said, the, the request cards uh, for the organ were on top of the organ. And the top one was to celebrate my divorce, uh, walking back to, hell, uh, to happiness by Helen Shapiro. He says, Barney in Aberdeen in 1960, uh, that was a shock. So as I say, when I was about seven, the casino closed and I spread my wings a bit further. And so I started going to the other uh, cinemas in that vicinity, um, to, the, to the Regal uh, that, that many people will remember in Aberdeen. And it had, it had amongst other things, it had a Saturday matinee. And uh, if anybody remembers the eras of Saturday matinees, it's an incredible to remember because they were so outr outrageous. The behaviour was so terrible. We had huge clouds of children leaving the poorer parts of Aberdeen, swarming into the Regal. And somebody would ask, whose birthday is it? And hundreds of hands would go up uh, that it was their birthday. But we'd uh, go up there and, uh, and uh, have a, an outrageous uh, time there. 
And then also in Aberdeen, the additional feature in Aberdeen is that we tended to get a lot of half days at school because the education committee believed many of us didn't have coats so that we couldn't go back to school on a rainy day. But of course, what we did is we ran about the streets anyway. And uh, I will remember going to the Regal to watch Carry On Constable with uh, 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 hundreds of other uh, children who were missing school. So virtual learning, maybe not uh, uh, as quite as new as we, we think. And then I, I went to the Kingsway. And uh, as I say, this was the time when cinemas were getting into some sort of crisis of attendances and uh, uh, around about 1960. And the Kingsway, uh, amongst many others, were trying to put, win people in by having very, very dramatic and uh, expansive films. And the key one was Ben Hur. And so everybody wanted to go and see Ben Hur. It had all these exciting crashes, uh, it's a, a dramatic, massive scale battles and so forth. And it cost two shillings to get in. And that was an enormous amount of money uh, for the poorer people in Aberdeen. But everybody's badgering their mother uh, to go and see Ben Hur. And uh, once when I was giving one of my talks, somebody came up and they said uh, that they managed to get the two shillings from their mother. And then they came home two hours later and the mother said, where have you been? He said, I've been to Ben Hur. And he said, no, you haven't, because it's a four hour film. And he said, oh, it came up intermission. And I thought that was Roman for the end. And I left, so he missed the second half. But, uh, you know, that was the, the, the way we were at the time. I then moved uh, to Torrey uh, to, to, you know, for a, for, a, for a council house and started going to the Torrey cinema, which again is famous in Aberdeen because it was the only cinema that was outside uh, the main city centre. And again, it was very much a community feel. And we, we'd go on a Saturday afternoon. So again, hundreds of children would go and misbehave outrageously uh, at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the Torrey cinema, amongst others. The Torrey cinema, I mentioned it more of a community feel. When it opened in the net late 1920s, the Lord Provost at the time said that the population of Torrey had grown by 10 times in the previous 20 years. It was a crowded area and uh, people were swarming to the cinemas. And it wasn't a luxurious cinema. Uh, by any means, it was very Spartan, but uh, it continued to have a big appeal. And that's one of the interesting features about looking at Aberdeen cinemas, is that uh, in the 1920s and 30s, late 20s and 30s, very grand cinemas were built, and you'll hear more about them later today. And the expectation is that the rougher end of cinemas, like the casino and maybe the Torials, would close. But that didn't happen. People kept loyal uh, to their as our local cinema. And uh, that message was brought home to me and when one of my uh, uh, um, talks, this woman who had uh, quite severe uh, palsy uh, was trying to convey to me a message. And she said, yeah, you're right what you said about community because my grandmother loved to eat rans. And for those of you not from Aberdeen, rans is boiled cod's eggs and the smell is very, very strong. And she said, you couldn't take that to the capital or the grander cinemas that you will hear more about. I spread my wings uh, when I, you know, 12 or more and started going to the very grander cinemas in the city centre, to the capital, the Majestic, the city and the Astoria, all of whom have fantastic stories that, uh, again, some of which you're going to hear today uh, of their grandeur and uh, the investment that uh, went into them. Uh, I always very moved to read the capital was rebuilt in a very short time uh, and uh, the, the review said it had been transformed as if by a magic hand. And one of the things you'll see, I think you see later a wee clip of a, f a fire in a cinema. One of the reasons was several cinemas had fires in the 1930s and the main reason was overload of the electrical circuits because of how crowded Aberdeen was that you, you had the electrical problem. We also had very flamboyant figures involved in cinemas, and we may hear a little about that today. We'll certainly hear something about the Donald family, a great family who did so much for Aberdeen. And uh, they marketed themselves, tremendous marketing. Uh, James F. Donald, the name for a good night out. And at one point they had cinemas, they had the ice rink, they had interests in the dog track, they had interests in the football club, just about anything to do with entertainment. 
uh, they had a hand in. But we also had other figures. We had, uh, um, uniquely, I am sure, we had a local politician who designed cinemas. And uh, the two things were not always, he, he, you know, nowadays we would be very much uh, pleased to make sure there was no overlap, and that didn't happen. But the great Tommy Scott Sutherland uh, designed several of the cinemas in Aberdeen, the Majestic and the Astoria. And he also, just by the way, uh, uh, to, for uh, our, to our presenters there, he also at one point owned the Tivoli, but uh, it was the Tivoli by that time and not Her Majesty. So my uh, own personal story moved on. And, and you get more interested in the more uh, way out uh, artistic films. So I used to go to what was called the Cosmo 2. And again, in contrast to the very grand cinemas, uh, the Cosmo 2 was in a converted horse stable and you couldn't get the, the film uh, uh, equally focused so that everybody could see a, no, a non-blurred picture. Uh, but it was a fantastic achievement because uh, the Cosmo 2, before it was the Cosmo, it was the Curzon Cinema, and before that it was the News Cinema, it used to play newsreels, and again had this fantastic flamboyant leading figure, uh, a Central European Jewish uh, man called uh, 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 Ernest Bromberg, who was always in a evening dress, always in, uh, dressed even better than our, our uh, presenters. Uh, uh, but uh, it was a flamboyant, uh, and he made his own newsreels, and we may see something of that uh, later today. He made his own newsreels of Aberdeen uh, throughout the 30s and, uh, and 40s. And my story very much comes full circle that um, I go back to the Belmont now very regularly. I'm a very strong supporter of our, our uh, local arts cinema at the Belmont, which has been shown films for uh, well over a century, for 130 years nearly, and uh, really shows that continuity in Aberdeen. Uh, the, the other, one of the other cinemas in Aberdeen, the View Cinema, is also on the site of where cinemas have been for well over uh, 100 years. And in fact, just to finish again with a personal story, uh, a woman who I knew to be at least in her late, uh, 60s came up to me and said, would you be willing to speak to my mother so her mother must be approaching a hundred or, or, or around that age. And uh, she wants to ask you a question. And this uh, lady in a uh, motorized chair came and said, do you re remember the Palladium Cinema? And I said, well, I don't remember it, but I know of it. And I'm one of the few people who know it. It closed in 1928. And she said, yeah, we used to play. Again, it was one of this, it was in the site of what's now the View Cinema. And she said, we used to play in the foyer before it opened and play houses and we thought it was so grand. So again, that crowded nature, the, the, the Aberdeen was a very poor city, but it developed this unique film culture because people wanted uh, to, to get out of their circumstances for a wee while. And I'm so, you know, very pleased that at the very tail end of that, I was part of it. And I have the memories which I'm pleased to pass on. So delighted to speak to anybody ever any time about cinemas and uh, thank you for that this is the short time we've had together today thanks very much thank you